Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I had some really good questions from Kenny about wedding photography, and I'm going to go over all those questions today, as well as tell you about how I typically run a wedding and how I, I shoot the wedding, what I'm looking for, what I'm doing. I know I haven't done a lot of photos on wedding photography, because to me it's just another portrait shoot. It's just another portrait session, basically, but it's longer, and there's other there are other things going on in there, but they're they're very similar. And I've done hundreds of, of weddings and events over the years. And so to, to me, it's really, uh, I, I don't want to say old hat, but they kind of all run together to a point. And so it's easy for me to transition from one thing to another. Uh, it's really difficult for me to be thrown and not, uh, not know what to do. So um, that just really comes with experience. Uh, your first couple of weddings or your first couple of events, it might be difficult for you to get that, uh, that time in. But uh, for most people, I actually recommend you uh, start shooting with someone else that's already done some weddings. Uh, it seems like Kenny in his questions here is going to be the primary photographer and the only one. He's not going to have anybody else with him. Uh, I strongly suggest taking someone else with you just in case. But uh, let's go over his questions and we'll go from there. All right. So first question. Since February last year, I've been using a Nikon 3100 and it's the only body I have. Um, I know how pros say to have two bodies, which yes, it is a good idea to have two bodies. I have a 3518 and a 5018. I won't do the wedding without a 7 and a 200 because of how relevant that lens would be. So I'm thinking about a Sigma and Tamron version since they are the cheapest. I'm sure you understand how big an opportunity this is for someone who is dead serious about photography and there aren't many opportunities going around. What do you think I should do? I already plan on stacking up on batteries and memory cards, but another body? Question mark. Well, Sounds like you have a pretty good start. You have that single body, you have a 51.8 and then the 35.18. That's a good start. And you definitely need that 70 to 200 lens. Now, it's, you're going to be changing lenses a lot in between that 35 and that 50 because you're going to find a number of times either the 35 is going to be too wide or the 50 isn't going to be, uh, or is going to be too wide. I think I said that right. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, you're going to be swapping in between those two since you don't have a zoom lens in that wide range. So uh, definitely consider the 17 to 55. And uh, you also mentioned about having two bodies. Yes, I always take both my bodies to every event, to every shoot that I do, but especially weddings. Uh, I can't run out and grab another body. I can't hit pause on, a, on a, that kind of a shoot. So I have to have that additional equipment to be able to go ahead and do and be able to utilize in case something goes wrong. Same with batteries, same with memory cards. Don't run out of memory cards. Don't be sitting there in the corner deleting images because you ran out of memory cards. That's the worst thing that you can do. Uh, 70 to 200, yes, that's great. Glad you're going after that. You will definitely need to have one of those lenses. Um, another thing, maybe try and borrow an extra body from someone. Maybe don't use it since it's not your primary body, but just keep it in your bag so that you have it in case you need it. Um, as far as equipment goes, make sure you know your equipment in and out, upside and down. That you cannot replace that. You have got to know your equipment really well. Last thing you're going to need is at least one flash. You've got to have that with you. If you can get two flashes and you can work with an Nikon CLS system, that'll be great. Be able to put one off camera and work with it. So that's really your equipment. And that's the first step is getting all that equipment together. And that's kind of your, your, your uh, meat and potatoes, the primary stuff that you need, um, or I would say minimal equipment that you would need. Usual routine as the photographer. How early do you arrive at the bride's location, her home question mark before the ceremony? Well, uh, that really depends on the bride and the event and what they want to do. If it's a first wedding, they'll typically want to document a lot more of the getting ready and the early stuff. If it's a second wedding, a lot of time they don't want to do that. They're, they just want it to be a lot more low key. They don't want as many photos. And so that's the normal way that it's going to go for you. So talk to the bride, figure out what she wants. Don't be too pushy about it, but just make sure that, to tell her, hey, we're going to catch this kind of photo, this kind of photo, this kind of photo before, you know, during this time. And then if you, you know, maybe at the salon, there were, you know, one type of photo, but then later on, it's going to be another type of photo. If it's just getting ready at the house or whatever it is, or hotel, wherever that area is. So give her an idea of what you might be uh, capturing in those different times and let her decide when you're going to, you know, when for you're going to show up. All right. 
Uh, when do you leave her location and head for the ceremony location? That's a really good question too. Typically I'm leaving with the bride or just maybe a few minutes before. Most of the time, I have, at least as of late anyway, uh, the schedule hasn't allowed me to photograph the guys before the wedding and if I, or I'm sorry, before the ceremony. And if I do, I'm typically doing, I'm typically sending another photographer to go and do that because I almost always shoot with two photographers at a time. So that's, that's not something um, that you really need to worry about. The primary photographer just kind of rides with the bride and stays with the bride the whole day. So if you do have a second one, push them over to shoot the guys early if you have them. If not, don't worry about it. Just get the guys by themselves after the ceremony. When's the usual best time to take group shots and couple portraits? You will want to do those right after the wedding, right after the ceremony. That's the best time you'll have, say, uh, probably 10 or 15, maybe 20 people sticking around, a lot of family, uh, and you'll want to do those types of images. Uh, here's a couple of examples. You'll just put them up at the altar. You will uh, arrange them, get a nice pose, arrange them real nicely. Really isn't a difficult shot, difficult thing. Uh, the main thing, as you'll notice, uh, as to where they're, how they're standing, making sure you can see their entire head and then turning their shoulders a little bit so that they kind of are stacked in a little bit. Those are the big things. And then, of course, with the bride and groom, you have the nice arm and arm pose with their their front hands together, maybe the groom holding the, up underneath the flowers. Uh, make sure you can't see the groom's uh, right hand around the body. That's always a no-no because it looks like there's a growth or something coming out back there. So um, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, paying attention and figure out the heights and that kind of thing. Uh, different altars are going to look different also. Estimate of usual amount of photos at the end of the day. Uh, at the bride's home, ceremony, and reception. Well, I don't, I can't really give you individual numbers in any of those, but what I can say is make sure you don't overshoot. Just sitting there and spraying and praying is not the way to shoot a wedding. You've got to be paying attention to what you're shooting, being more selective to what you want to shoot. Ending up with 2,000 photos at the end of a wedding is not going to get you good stuff. You've got to really stop and pay attention to what you're doing. Do a better job at each individual photo. Make every single one count. At a normal wedding, I would say I the two photographers would typically shoot around 1,000 images, maybe a little bit less, maybe around 850. And then we only deliver around 300, 350 maximum. I don't like delivering any more than that. It's just too many images. It's too much work for the bride to go through all of those photos. And it also costs you more money, especially if you're giving to her a set of proofs. So it's just too much work. Also, have you had to spend more time editing all of those. So just don't do it. It's not worth the, the additional time. Do a better job with the photos you're taking instead of taking a ton of them. So definitely less than 1,000, especially if you're shooting yourself. If there's two of you, you know, 1,200 maybe. If there, you know, there's one photographer, you've got to stay under 1,000. Using a flash at weddings. Yes, no, depends on the light. Yes, 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 you definitely need to be using a flash at the wedding, but selectively. Great example, if you are outdoors on a nice day, you're probably just going to want to use the flash as a fill flash. The sun outside is going to be your main light, and then you're going to use the flash as a fill light, just to fill in some of those shadows in the face or the eyes or something like that, and that's it. So you're going to want to dial that down on a TTL setting, maybe two stops under, something like that on the... Uh, on the SB800, 900, you can dial in the number of stops under. So that's what you'll want to do, maybe two stops under, and that should be just fine. There'll be just a little bit of fill flash. All right, so take a photo, shoot one, you know, take a look at it, see what it looks like, then adjust from there. As far as the rest of the day is concerned, you'll definitely want to be using it, say, for uh, indoor stuff. It may end up being your main light. Uh, as you probably will already know I'm not a fan of the on-camera flash being the main light I think it's too flat it's boring it removes all the shadows out of the face and out of the body and it just it's not interesting light at all if that's your only choice then so be it that's what you have to do but I will definitely use the flash indoors say uh, during the reception for grab shots for dancing for that kind of thing at that point I'm definitely using on-camera flash just because using off-camera is a lot more difficult 
and only in certain situations will I use that off-camera flash for, say, dancing or um, grab shots. Typically, I would have another assistant following me around to do those types of images, and so that's, that's kind of a better way to go, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what you're looking to do with your flash. How do you choose group shot location, and how much time do you spend on group shots? Well, typically, that's, there's a lot of factors, actually, that come into play there. Uh, number one, it's the timing in between the ceremony and the reception. You, if you're going to an outdoor location in between the two, you want to be careful that, to make sure that you have enough time to go travel to that location, then travel to the reception area or the, you know, the reception location and actually spend 20, 30 minutes at that, say, park or something along those lines. Now, immediately after the ceremony, a lot of times that depends on the church. If it's a Catholic church, they might have uh, services directly after the wedding, so they might only give you 15 minutes. It really depends on the bride, and every single one of those is different. If there's a lot of people, you know, a lot, a lot of different family groups that the bride wants, and make sure you get a list of all the photos that, they, that the bride wants. That is imperative. Do not do the wedding without that list. All right, you've got to have that list to make sure that you're staying on track and you don't miss anything. Then if something does go bad, you can always go back to her and say, hey, you know, I'm really sorry, but this photo that you requested was not on the list. So, you know, and then you have something to kind of fall back on. All right, so um, all depends on timing. The number of people typically on a typical one, I'd say 15, 20 minutes at the church, and then we travel to wherever the park is or wherever, whatever scenic area. Then we spend another 30 minutes there, and then we travel to the reception. And typically that's when cocktail hour is over, and the bride, maybe a, and groom maybe a 15 minutes, 20 minutes to sit and relax. And then after that, they'll go right into the reception, be introduced, all that stuff. So the next question is on interaction. How much do you direct the bride and or groom while photographing them? I am directing them almost 100% for the posed photos. I know what I want. I know what looks good on them. I know what style they're looking for. So any of the posed photos, I am directing them 100%. I'm making sure that their position is good, making sure their head positions, their hands, their you know, all the little things that make a huge difference, the background, the lighting, everything, all those things make a difference. So you need to be paying attention to that. And yes, you are directing them 100%. Now, if you're doing more journalistic work, first you're gonna, especially if you're the only photographer, first you're gonna do those group photos, then you're gonna step back and you're gonna try and get some candids. It's gonna be difficult to do that. And in my experience, it's actually better to have two photographers doing that because you can't be shooting the candids while you're doing the group shots. And some of the best candids come out of while you're shooting those groups from that second angle over to the one side or you know, left side or right side or you know, something else that's going on behind you that you can't pay attention to. You've got to have your, bri your, your concentrate on the bride and groom and the group sh shot that's in front of you. How do you interact with everyone else? Well, it, you know, you're, you're there. You're going to be the, the guy that's pretty much running the show. You're there the whole time. You're making sure that they're on time. You're making sure, you know, you're talking about locations. Yes, go do this. Yes, go do that. Um, you know, you, you're keeping time. You're making sure that everybody is on time and moving quickly and uh, basically running the show until you hand it off to the DJ at the reception. You're the boss at that point. You're keeping everyone going. So, you, you know, you need to kind of have that thought process in your head of, yes, let's do this. Yes, let's do that. No, let's not do that because of time or something along those lines. So definitely consider that. Last question, when is the best time to eat something? That's a great question, and this is something that I've done for years, which is have the bride put you on the guest list. All right, That's a real important thing because a lot of locations, a lot of uh, nicer reception places will just stick you in some back room somewhere or in the kitchen and feed you a hoagie, and that's not what you want. You want to, have, you want to be sat with everyone else in the reception area fed a, a real meal you know with salad and everything else and you know that's what's going on it's an accepted practice i actually put that in my contract my wedding photography contract and i have for years because I, i've had that where you know you're, you're put off to the side and people kind of forget about you and the you know the it just makes it so much easier to make sure to say to them hey put me make sure i'm on the guest list 
and see, uh, you know, you can find a table or put me in one of the tables, wherever it may be, and that's the best way to go. And just eat with everyone else. If it is a long day, uh, say it's an eight-hour wedding or something like that, maybe bring some power bars or some water or whatever with you, leave it in your car, and then, you know, traveling in between, that's when you can grab, you know, that bite to eat or just a snack or something like that. So that's probably the best way to go with that. And uh, again, experience talking, it's happened, and I've lost a lot of good photos because of it. So, um, yeah, try that out. Final thoughts on weddings. They can be a great way to make a living, but they definitely take a long time to build up and to get good referrals and to get good sources to, to uh, people to refer you. Um, they are a lot of fun. I really enjoy them. I, I know a lot of photographers that absolutely hate them and would never shoot a wedding, but I, I've always enjoyed them. I've been doing them for a long time, and actually the way that you're doing it is not my recommended way to go. I actually recommend that you start out shooting with another photographer, wedding photographer, as a second or a third shooter and get some experience, see how things go, see how they run things, learn from their photos. That's going to be the, really the best way to do it, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, uh, your route is definitely the harder route, the tougher route, and you're going to have a lot more issues and a lot more problems learning this, you know, going, trying to basically teach yourself and learn on your own. So uh, I do wish you luck, Kenny, and anywhere else, anyone else that uh, is thinking about doing this, it's, again, it's a lot of work, but you can do it. Uh, one other thing to make sure that you have your ducks in a row on is your albums. Make sure you know what you're going to be giving. Find a good album manufacturer. Find a good company that's going to give you your proofs and your prints and uh, whatever else. Have all that stuff lined up beforehand so that you can hit the ground running and give those photos out and sell those photos. Um, if you can put them online for sale, that's I personally don't like doing that. I just like to show them as a, just a photo gallery of images. That's my preferred method, and I think it's a little bit nicer to do that. So, Kenny, I hope I answer your questions. In the meantime, if anyone else has any questions, I'd love to hear them. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See ya.